Hello, my name is Ricky Spears, and I'm an instructor and consultant with SharePoint Solutions. We got a question in today on our SharePoint help community uh, from Aaron, and Aaron asks, I would like to make a workflow to automatically notify the person who submits a form when an update has been made to the form. I would like to do this without writing code, and any tips would be appreciated. So rather than taking, um, it would take me far too long to write out a response to this, and I decided, well, hey, let me just record a video um, showing what the primary concepts are here. So I'm teaching a class in InfoPath and Workflow this week, and I have a demo site uh, set up where I've been doing some uh, experimentation as I teach the class and, and, and demonstrating a variety of things. And so in this library here, I have created a parking permit form. And let me fill out and submit a new form to the library so that you get to see how this works. So it's a pretty simple form, and let me just fill out some uh, sample information here. Let's say that the person uh, who's filling this out will say it's George Jetson, and George's email address is george at spacelease.com, and let's put in his email address is 336-555-9898. And we'll say that uh, George drives a 2003 Ford Ranger 4x4 with a license plate that says Pick Up. How original. And we're also going to say that George uh, wants to apply for a parking permit to park at Building B. So we fill out this form and George submits the form. Uh, now, the way I have this set up right here, I'm not using InfoPath form services, so I'm filling out this form in InfoPath Filler uh, instead of filling it out in the browser, but that does, that's not going to have any effect on the workflow that we're going to create. So when we finish uh, filling out the form and submit it, uh, if I go back over here to my form library, what you're going to notice is that I now have a new form called George Jetson Pickup, which is uh, the name of the person who filled out the form. Uh, and um, we have, um, uh, or it's the name that we put on the form, and the license plate number is Pickup. Now, you, you'll notice here that I'm logged in as student, and so student was the person uh, who created this form. Uh, because that's who I'm logged in as. So, um, Aaron, it sounds like what you would like to do is that anytime any changes are made to this form, you want the person who created this form, that would be student, to get an email letting student know that, hey, something's changed about this form. So, um, uh, to do that, and you say that you don't want to write any code to do that, to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to use a tool called SharePoint Designer. And in SharePoint Designer, I've already opened up the site where my form uh, lives in, and it's a site at SharePoint One slash HR for Human Resources slash Parking Permits. And once I've opened up the site, uh, I'm going to click on Workflows on the left-hand side, and I'm going to create a new list workflow that's connected to the Parking Permit Applications Library. This is where we submitted our, um, or where we submit our Parking Permit Applications. And the first thing I need to do in writing my workflow is give my workflow a name. And the name that I'm going to give this workflow is going to be called Notify uh, Creator Notify Creator about changes to the form. And I'm not going to type in a description. Uh, I could do, certainly do that, but I think my name is descriptive enough. So I'm just going to click the OK button. And when I do that, that creates a new blank workflow, and it takes me to the editor where I can begin writing my workflow. If I click on Workflow Settings up here in the ribbon, 
this takes me to the workflow settings page where I can set um, some, some things about how my workflow behaves. The thing that's probably most important here is the section called start options. And you say that anytime there's any change to a particular form, you want the person who, who originally created the form to be notified that there's been some change to it. So our options for when our workflow starts is it can be started manually, it can start when an item is created, or it can start when an item is changed. And it sounds like we, what we want to do here is that we want our workflow to start anytime an item is changed. So I'm going to uncheck the manual option and just check this option to start when an item is changed. Then I'm going to return to the editor and I do that by clicking on Edit Workflow here in the Customization group. That takes me back to the editor where I can write my workflow. And it turns out this is a really simple one-step workflow, the way that you've worded your question. So I have one step in my workflow, and I'm going to change that the name of that step from Step 1 to just simply send email notification about a change. Then inside this step I'll position my cursor and you'll see the flashing orange bar and up on the ribbon I'm going to click on action and I'm going to insert a, an action that's called send an email. That adds the action to my workflow and there's a hyperlink there that says these users and when I click on that hyperlink it opens up a dialog box where I can define my email message. The first thing that I do in the email message is that I need to say who is this email going to? And if I click on the address box, or the address button uh, over here on the right, I get a dialog box where I can select from users. And you'll notice that one of the users that I can select is the user who created the current item. And so this is the person that I want to be notified anytime there's any change to that particular form. So I'll click Add, and I'll click OK, and that puts that person's name up here. The next thing that, um, that I want to do is I want to add a subject line for, to my email. And um, you'll notice there's an ellipsis here, and if I click on the ellipsis, I get another dialog box called a String Builder, where I can create a, dy a dynamic um, uh, title that even includes some information from the columns in my list or library. So my, the title um, uh, that I'm going to put here is going to be uh, the and I'm going to put two quotation marks there and I'm, I'm going to say form has been changed. And I'm going to come back here inside the quotation marks position my cursor there, and down here in the lower left hand corner I'm going to click the Add or Change Lookup button. And what I want to put inside the quotation marks is the current item, and when I click uh, on the field from source, uh, the field that I want is the name field. Um, this is the name of the form. So my title is going to be the such and such form has been changed. Now inside my email, um, I can um, I can customize this message to be whatever I want it to be, even include some dynamic text. And so I'm going to start off by saying dear, and um, who am I saying dear to? Well. Who are, the current item, the item that this workflow is running on, uh, that's going to be um, whoever created that item. And actually I want to change that. So I'm going to select it and click Add or Change Lookup. And instead of being as a string, I want that to be this person's display name. So dear so-and-so. I'm going to say you wanted to be notified 
when the uh, and then whatever the name of this form is and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a look up again this is the current item and I'm going to do whatever I'm going to choose the name of the form well I keep going too far there yeah so there's the name of the form um, has been changed and let's also come in here and let's tell um, let's see here let's take the name and make that bold and italicized and then underneath it let's tell him who made the change and when the change was made. So that's going to be the current item and we're going to go out and get the name that's stored in the modified by uh, in the modified by column. So here's modified by I'm going to display this in my email as the is that user's display name. Changed it. I'm going to say and changed it on. And then out here I'm going to do a lookup. And this is going to be the current item modified and current item modified contains the date and the time that the change occurred and I'm going to put that in as a uh, I'm going to put that in as a um, as a long date I add a period and I'm going to say thank you the workflow so here's my custom email. We have some custom fields in it. Uh, we have a custom subject line, and whoever created the current item, that's who this email is going to go to. So once I'm finished defining my email, I'll click the OK button. This completes my workflow, and when I'm ready to publish it, I come up here to the workflow ribbon, and I click the publish button. This will take just a moment to publish the workflow. And we can see that, it, that it's finished now, and we're ready to go test this thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here to my browser. And uh, let me open up this George Jetson pickup form. Um, there's not really any change that I want to make here, but I have another view of this form that I've created, which is for the administrators. And one of the things that the administrator might do is type in a permit number here. And let's say that our, our administrator uh, wants, to get, wants to send George the permit number 332244. So the administrator would enter that number in and then click the Submit and Close button. Now, so this is going to mean that our form gets updated and changed. And when we click the Submit and Close button, uh, there's a rule on our form. I don't know if you caught that, but the permit expiration date gets calculated and populated um, before it submits the form. And if we come back out here to SharePoint and we refresh our view, And let's look at the George Jetson pickup form. And I'm going to select that and let's go over here to the right. Scroll way over here and I've got a lot of fields that I'm showing up here. Uh, you'll notice that my notify creator about changes to the form workflow um, for that item has been, has been completed. Um, you'll also notice that the permit number that we entered in gets populated here, so there really was a change that took place to the form. Uh, now, let's go back over here, let's go over here to Outlook, and let me do a send receive, and let's see if that email 
uh, comes in to student and what it looks like. So I'll click send and receive all folders. And here is the email that come in. And it says, dear student, that's the person who made, who created it. You wanted to be notified when George Jetson pickup has been changed. Student changed it on Wednesday, August 8, 2012. Thank you, the workflow. So our workflow is running. Uh, if we made another change to the form, student would get it, our workflow would run again because it runs each time there's a change to the item and student will continue to get uh, this email. If Alan Jackson or Ben Burton had created this form or it was actually George Jetson that created the form, uh, then George Jetson is the person who would, who would receive um, these email notifications. So I hope that answers your question. And uh, if you would like to know more uh, about uh, how to write SharePoint Designer workflows, I'd like to encourage you to look into our InfoPath 2010 and SharePoint Server 2010 no-code workflow deep dive. Uh, it's a four-day class that digs really deep into what can you do with InfoPath 2010, InfoPath Form Services 2010, and SharePoint Server, and SharePoint Designer no-code workflows. So it's a class that everyone who takes it really loves it. They say it's an exciting class. It's an incredibly fun class, and I'd like to encourage you to check into that. Uh, if you're wondering when the next classes are coming up, uh, at, the end, at the end of August, um, our next class is going to be in Chicago in September. We're going to be doing a class in Dallas in October. We're going to be doing a class in Nashville. And this week I'm teaching it in Washington, D.C., but I'll be back in Washington, D.C. teaching this class at the end of November. Aaron, I hope that answers your question, and I look forward to seeing you in one of our InfoPath and SharePoint, and SharePoint Designer Workflow classes very soon.